there, it's Ethan here with Peghead Nation. And uh, I'm gonna take a moment just to sort of demo this mandolin here today um, that I've been playing. It's a Montleone, they call it the Grand Artist, I suppose. And I've had it for um, about two years now and, and just been, been playing on it basically ever since I got it. Um, it's really, you know, sort of opened up and, and grown a lot since I first started playing it, which has been great. Um, as far as I can tell, it was built around 2000 um, in Long Island, New York, where, where John Monteleone builds instruments. And um, made its way through a couple owners to me, and I got it from the Music Emporium in Boston, great guitar shop there. And uh, I got it from them after I, I demoed it for them as well. Uh, and um, after I demoed it in February of the year, perhaps, it was still there in September, so I went back and bought it <laughs> because it made a little impression on me and um yeah you know it it really it really opened up a lot since then and um it was good then but um it's even better now it's number 172 um i had these new frets put on it when i first got it quite large fret wire which uh i like it's it's um makes it easy to play easy to set up um it's his own tailpiece design which is really kind of cool I have one of these armrests made by the luthier Dan Voigt down in Nashville, which I really like. Um, it's it's kind of the right height to get my elbow, um, my forearm up um, to play the mandolin to get my wrist in the right position. Um, I'm using one of these straps from Pine Grove in England, which I really like. I, I like how wide it is. Um, maybe, um, I hope you don't deal with this, but I, I just had like some pinching in my, my sort of left shoulder a while ago several years ago from a strap that's really thin. And so this slightly, this nice wide strap was really good for me for that reason. Um, I just had these Waverly tuners put on it, which uh, do, you know, the best job that any mandolin tuner can to keep the mandolin in tune. Um, it's, it's uh, when I first got it, it had this really nice high end, which it still has. Know, it kind of works all up there. Um, I will say that the low end really started to come in um, maybe maybe about a year after I started playing it quite a lot. Um, and and it's really kind of evolved to like a really nice balanced instrument. Um, in the past couple years. Um, yeah, it just, um, the thing that struck me, you know, besides how it sounded when I first played it was the responsiveness. It's a very responsive mandolin, um, kind of. It gives a lot back. It kind of lets you know what's what's happening, um, which is which is good to have at, at kind of, you know, when you're playing a lot and, and having to react quickly to what's happening around you musically. Um, I'm using I'm using the Didario uh, custom medium set, so um, 40, 26, 16, and 11.5, which really sort of helped. At one point, um, the low end was sort of overpowering the high end, um, and the high end just wasn't speaking quite, a, quite quite as much as I wanted it to. And those slightly heavier high strings really helped it um, to balance itself out. And of course, every mandolin's different, so um, that just what works for me. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great mandolin. Um, I'm starting to put some scratches on it, um, which is good. I think, you know, they gotta be played these things. Um, I've got one of these tone guards on the back, which, which I like personally. And, um, yeah, it's a good instrument. I'm lucky to have it.